In this series, we're going to continue our investigation in how to build a zombie-infested urban environment in Unity 2018.3. And today, we're going to focus in on light probes. Hey everyone, this is Al over at GameDevHQ.com. Like and subscribe, check out our other amazing videos on this site, and sign up today at GameDevHQ.com to find out what amazing assets we offer to allow you to become an amazing game developer. In this series, we're gonna focus in on light probes. What are they? How do you set them up? And what is it about them that makes your scene look so much better? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about something that's been around in Unity for a while called light probes. And most people don't use them, but they're pretty darn powerful. So what is a light probe? Um, basically, basically what a light probe is, is when you do GI calculations, global illumination calculations, you're bouncing light everywhere. And in order to do real-time GI calculations, you need one of those 2080 that does like real-time ray tracing. And most of us can't afford a 2080 or don't have the proper requirements to run a 2080. And most gaming software doesn't do 2080 uh, ray tracing in real time because it's just such an expensive process. It's, it's extremely heavy. Because um, you're just factoring in so many different light sources. So uh, Unity came up with something that was a very efficient way to fake the dynamic look of GI without actually creating GI. And that's using light probes. So if I were to create a 3D game object, and let's say I'm going to create this sphere right here. And I drag this sphere up into this scene. As I take it through it gets illuminated over here and over here, which is basic illumination. But when we get to right here, um, it believes it's in the shadow, um, but it's only taking in the HDR light probe. So how do we set up a light probe here? Well, all we have to do is go to game objects, lights, and then choose light probe. And it's going to create these spheres right here. And what each one of these spheres is, is a point in your scene that is going to take in light information. And it's going to give that to dynamic objects. Now, not the static objects, dynamic. So these buildings that are static will not take in any lighting data, but the buildings that, or the, the sphere that is dynamic will take in that lighting data. So how do we get this to work? Basically, uh, what I usually do is I look at my scene from the perspective of lightest to darkest, okay? So in this particular shot, um, I'm looking at these light areas as being ones, and this dark area being a zero, and then one and a zero, and a one and a zero. And I want to make sure all my dynamic objects take in that light information and it's able to absorb that light data um, as it passes through. So I created a quick sphere, a box, uh, a, quick, a quick box out of these. And I selected these four boxes at the edge. And I'm going to hit this duplicate selected. And I'm just going to drag these over right around here. And it's going to create this kind of web. And what I want to do now is I want to take these six and I'm going to move these into this dark middle area right here. And then I'm going to take these six and I'm going to move this over to my lightest area, which is right over here. And I'm going to duplicate this a bunch. So I'm going to go to my top view and I'm going to hit duplicate selected. And I'm just going to create almost this web of light probes in my scene. And I can actually even duplicate these. And you see how I can go through onto the other side and keep matching that. And I'll just duplicate the last selected right here. Now, I'm going to go back to my point of view 
Now, if I grab my probe, you notice how these spheres don't really have much of a change in color. And it doesn't happen until I get out into this realm. And you see how this sphere right here is super bright? Um, the reason why this occurs is because certain lights work with light probes and other lights don't. So in this area, these three are spotlights. And inside it says, real-time indirect bounce shadowing is not supported for spot and point lights. So unfortunately, we can't use spotlights if we want to use light probes. That information is not going to be transmitted to the probes. I don't know why they didn't do that. That makes no sense to me, but that's their rule. Now, it's really your call what you want to do. In this instance, I am going to set these to baked. And I'll set uh, my intensity of my baked to four. And you see how now my light probes are taking in that information. So as I get closer, my object is lighting up. As I get dark further away into the center, it matches the light intensity of these. And as I go in closer, it lights up again. Now, now that's all nice and good, but I lose my shadow down here, which is something I, I don't want to lose. So with these spotlights created, I'm gonna set this down to let's say a two. So they're not super intense, but I still get that shape. And then I'll just duplicate these lights one more time. But these lights won't be baked. These will be real time. So I got a set of baked lights, and now I have a set of real-time lights. And now my object is adhering to the light probes, and it's adhering to creating a shadow into our scene as well. So if I go into my debug settings, I can turn off my light probe visibility. And you can see the difference. Here is our scene with the light probes off. And then here's the same scene with our light probes on. It's not the hugest difference in the world, but if you're going for more of a realistic approach, it's pretty essential to have some light probes into your scene to collect that GI data and splash it onto your game objects. So the darks don't look so dark, the lights don't look so light, and your character or your probe or your sphere in this instance is evenly lit within its scene. And so that's how you use light probes in Unity. And a special thank you to all the Plus and Pro members out there. Your support makes this channel possible and we couldn't do it without you. So we don't do a Patreon page here. We do Plus and Pro memberships over at Game Dev HQ. And every one of those sales goes to help support this channel to allow us to build more assets, more amazing game development assets to help you guys create amazing video games. So what is in the Plus and Pro membership? The Plus membership gives you access to unique monthly loot crates to help you build your game levels and access to Plus challenges to grow your C Sharp skills. The Pro membership is an amazing value that gives you over 150 in-game, ready-to-go assets, which are ready for your commercial product. Also, it gives you access, unlimited streaming access to all of our paid courses. This is Al, we're Game Dev HQ, we're out of here, have a great day, take care, I'll talk to you soon.